Pop, 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 persuadable. What's going on, everybody? So here is a mechanic guide. I want to give a shout out to Remy and Nori. Uh, she was a rank six mechanic. Uh, I was also a top 10 survivor. I main mechanic now. I've played a lot of games with her. Um, and before I begin this guide, I want to let you know this is one of the most complicated guides I've ever had to do. She's very complex. There's a lot of decision making. She's very dynamic. So you may play her differently. So I'm going to do my best to really show you all different ways to play her because there are three different ways to start the match with her. And I'm going to try to explain why I would do different things with different people and uh, the cost and benefits of your actions and how you wish to play her. Um, we can talk about the persona guide. I, I presume most of you guys understand what her benefits are, so we're going to skip that. But this is my typical build for her. Uh, you have your insolence. Uh, you have your... Uh, not insolence. You have... <laughs> You just go left or right. This helps you with your kiting ability. You have the uh, the right side that helps you with your end game, which is really important for her. And then I increase your ability to crouch. This is important when you are uh, in the beginning of the game. Sometimes you need to hide in between a pallet, right? And that can help you actually curve around the pallet without the hunter seeing you with no footprints. You can change it if you're new. And, and use this build right here. This build means that if you do die, your teammates will be able to see each other. Usually in high tier ranks, tier 6s and tier 5s, we all know how to play. We all know who needs to go and save. And we can tell just by reading um, the indicators up top. So usually I'll go upwards. Uh, you have other abilities that you can use. The self-deception some people use. I think that's a horrible thing to do. Some people do go with air walk and they, they sacrifice their, their left build. Because uh, they're not really trying to use the pallets or climb in windows. But in cases like Arms Factory, sometimes using those windows are necessary. Especially the loop. And having that initial boost can really buy you another 30 seconds. So I don't use Air Walk with, uh, with my build. I just use this standard Persona build that you see right now. So again, um, in this guide, I'm going to show you some chitin sessions. I'm going to show you different ways to play. You guys are not going to become experts right away. You got to practice it, but this will at least be the foundational knowledge. And I can promise you, if you keep playing, you'll get better and you'll have better situational awareness and you'll understand when you need to do certain things. And that's really the, the premise of this guide. I want you to be able to play like I do at tier six caliber uh, competitive gameplay and I think that a lot of people can do it, but she's a very dynamic character and it takes a lot of time. So again, it's going to take time and you'll get better as you improve. So here's conservative style number one. So conservative style number one essentially says that we understand that the machine will wiggle once it's about 30% deciphered, right? Once you get about 30% deciphered, it starts to wiggle, which means the hunter can see where you are right hunters can see which machines wiggle once it's past 30 to 40 percent so with this being said what this really does here is it says okay i know the machine's going to wiggle so i'm going to put my doll on the machine at 40 percent and then i'm going to just start running away okay so what's interesting is that you can actually tell when the puppet has been electrocuted if you look on the left side of the screen you'll see decoded see that pop up decoded plus 50 that means that the decoding has stopped, which means you need to start decoding again with the puppet. So it's actually a nice little indicator so you actually know when the robot is electrocuted, okay? Again, this is conservative style one, and even though your, your puppet is being, or your doll is being electrocuted, if the hunter decides to go there, right? Sure, you may lose your doll, but they just wasted either a teleport if they used it, or they're wasting a considerable amount of time early game, especially on a big map like this. So this is just showing you uh, the basic conservative style one. And what that is, again, is once you hit about 40%, you put your doll on it, and then you move your character, and then you don't, you don't try to hit the calibrations with your doll. Now, the reason why this is called conservative style is because if you're a mechanic, you technically decode faster than your doll, and nobody's been hit, right? So if nobody if nobody's hit, you technically can decode faster than your doll. Your doll is a 25% buff. You have a 35% buff. However, again, it's called conservative because we want to make sure that a hunter doesn't just teleport on us and kill us, 
especially if we're not in a nice easy spot and you see me crawling here by the way with that increased crawl speed uh, that's why you can use that so the difference between conservative style one and conservative style two is conservative style two now here's what i'm going to do okay i know that somebody is about to get uh kited or rather see that he's been hit i can't kite has been hit so what i now know is that i decode faster with my puppet so i'm going to put my puppet on this machine it's at about 40 percent. we don't know if she's going to teleport and about every four to seven seconds you're going to uh, get a potential calibration so with conservative style number two it means that right now i'm really focused on not only moving to the next position but making sure that i'm not getting electrocuted with my doll now this is actually important because every time you get electrocuted with the doll it decreases progress on the cipher machine so this is actually maximizing the ability to decode with your puppet as fast as you can and making it fluid you don't want it to stop right now technically this doll is only about five percent slower than a mind's eye right so this is conservative style too you got to be careful with this style because if the hunter is out running around they could hit you so a nice way to sum this up is conservative style one where you just leave the doll and allow yourself to get electrocuted is when you don't really know where the hunter is and you're just trying to transition and maybe you even want to draw the hunter to, to your doll's attention sure to sacrifice but sometimes it's worth it especially if you're wasting ample amount of time right early games the most important but this sort of strategy uh, is when you know that the hunter is going after somebody else they've already been injured and you're trying to transition because if somebody is injured, remember, with the mechanic, they're going to decode around 95%, right? They get a 45% debuff, but they have 135%. So they're around, they're around 90, 95%. So that's why there's a difference between conservative style one and conservative style two. And like I said, there are different situations when I would do them. Sometimes I'm more focused than just relocating. And other times I know they're being kited. So I want to make sure that that doll is decoding as fast as possible. In this game, I can relocate the doll right to the door after this. And I'll get, I'll get a little bit into the multitasking on how to know when to do two machines at once and even do the same machine at once. But I really want you to just understand the difference between conservative style one and conservative style two. Again, conservative style one, you wait for the doll to be electrocuted. The decoded indicator comes up. You reposition them. Conservative style two, you try to catch the calibrations. Typically, they occur as early as four seconds. Sometimes they occur at seven seconds. Sometimes they occur at 12 seconds. So that's why you have to frequently check back. Usually, sometimes when I'm running, I'll check back every two or three seconds. Um, again, that's when I know that a hunter is being kited. Somebody's already injured, and I, it is no longer beneficial for me to be decoding at my baseline value. And we'll get into that with the aggressive mechanic play. And that's why it's called aggressive mechanic play. And the aggressive mechanic play is, is, is somewhat ideal against photographer. And I'll try to really emphasize when you should be doing that, when you should not be doing that. And what you see me doing here, by the way, is I like to camp next to a, a machine as I'm using my doll because occasionally I can go back with my mechanic and I can touch the machine. And that's how you can prevent the crows. It's a good strategy because at one point we had like two people injured so it wasn't worth decoding so here's aggressive okay i know i'm by the safest machine in the map one of them just because i got the roller coaster and stuff so aggressive style means that i'm going to keep decoding this entire machine until somebody's hit i'm pretty much you know what i don't give a damn if this hunter comes after me right and these are usually for the top kiters the best kiters and those with the best situational awareness and people who are the best on the map right so i don't right now with this game style i'm pretty much saying i don't give a damn about the hunter teleport on me i dare you watch what happens this is one of the best styles to play because you decode super fast you're decoding at 135 percent the entire time and there's a there's a trade-off though if you're aggressively doing this your machine is going to wiggle faster than everybody else's so you got to worry about that teleport or that rocket dash or the photographer or the Wu Chang with his umbrella. So there's a huge payoff on this. And I can tell you that I like to play aggressive a lot, but there's some hunters where you gotta be really worried about, you gotta be careful about because they'll kill you. And it, it, it's really a good thing. Okay, so this is the anti-photographer. This is me in the beginning, all right? So for those who don't know, you see everybody, see all of those flash and you hide. Hide, crawl in a corner, don't even move, hide. 
Now the problem with this strategy, however, is that I'm so far away from a machine that I'm not really gonna be able to decode this machine in time by the time Photo World ends. So when Photo World ends, my cipher is gonna be cut in half. So you gotta be careful about this, be next to a machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you decoding two machines, different machines. Now in this situation, right, we got two people who are injured. We got two people who are injured. So that means that me as a mechanic, I'm not really gonna decode too well. So I realized this and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna stop switching back and forth. Right, you know how you can switch back and forth and try to get the calibrations down? Well, I'm realizing that it's not even worth it, right? Because now the photo world has been activated, but too many people are injured. Pretty much my decode speed is going to be horrible. So now it's like, you know what? I'm just going to stick to the puppet and I'm going to make sure that I don't miss any of these calibrations. I could take a gamble and go back to the mechanic every two seconds, three seconds or whatever, but it's just not worth it. It's just a waste of time. So here, how about two people on the same machine? So I'm not a huge fan of having the mechanic and doll on the same machine sometimes. And the reason being so is that it's really, I mean, there's some circumstances where it may be well, but not really in this one right here, right? Too many people are injured. So I'm more concerned about not missing the calibrations with the doll. Now, technically I could try to do it and then every three or four seconds go back to the doll, but being electrocuted even one time just means that it's gonna slow the progress down. So there's times where you can do it, but not even early game I don't like doing it because your mechanic technically goes faster. So I'm gonna show you a kiting session, right? So this guy just went through a wall. Trust me, he's a top hunter. He's known for this sort of sketchy behavior, but it's whatever. And I'm gonna show you what you need to do as a mechanic, right? So he got an early hit on me, right? I wasn't expecting him to go through the wall like that, but it was whatever. And I'm trying to have an actual real tight kiting session here. This is in a, in a rank match, okay? And what I'm trying to do is just buy as much time as I can, right? In this sort of area, I know what he can and can't do. I'm going to put my doll down. I know that's kind of dumb, but sometimes it can buy you time. And I just kind of gave him the curse mark. So I'm actually showing you me throwing my doll down and I probably shouldn't have done it. Not that that's what gets me killed anyways. And it also shows you getting the first hit on me. Now, typically... That doesn't happen that easily. So I'm showing you a bad kiting session, okay? This is a bad kiting session, what I would call a bad kiting session because it's realistic. As a mechanic, sometimes you're not gonna play perfect. Your job is to last as long as you can. So I'm gonna die right here, but look how many cypher machines we have up remaining. We got two cyphers remaining. This was, by the way, early game. He came after me right away. So with mechanic, you still need to kite. But in order to help you kite, there's a little trick. And you got to time it correctly. So this is end game, right? And I'm going to put all the stakes on the line. <laughs> and what that means is that I'm a one shot kill. He still has his detention. So I need to time this perfectly. If you can time it, you can use your robot, take the hit. The robot just took the hit and you can get away. And I put it all on the line to make sure I got it down right. And that's going to help you kite as well. It's, it's a, a tremendous skill and you should get it down. All right. So situational awareness is super important. You need to be able to adapt. So this is end game, right? This is against the top 15 hunter, and this is end game. Right now, the situation calls for me to kite as long as I can. I want all my teammates to get away, all right? And that's very important for me right now. Well, right now, all my teammates are on the other side of the map getting to the gate, and I don't care. I'm not trying to get away right now. What I'm trying to do is just kite as long as I can. Because in rank mode, you only need three people. And he, he decided to give up. That allows me to go. The reason why he gave up is because he knew he was going to lose the map. So don't think, oh, like that hunter didn't know what he was doing. That hunter knew exactly what he was doing. And he was trying to catch the other teammates off guard. And he was able to get one. Uh, we ended up winning this match with three people, by the way. But situational awareness is now saying, okay, what's going to happen now? He's on the... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, brain fart. <laughs> He's on the uh, chair. We'll just say chair. I know that I decode slower, so I'm going to allow the perfumer to go and finish the decode. So that's something that's important with mechanic. You really just need to know what your position is at all times. I probably should have put this in the beginning of the video, but the most important thing with mechanic is is really knowing which ciphers are safe, which ciphers are not safe. Which ciphers are safe against some hunters versus other hunters, and then your escape routes. So the biggest thing with mechanic is always being near a pallet, 
there's actually a pallet right behind me. So in certain circumstances, like if I was facing the clown right now and I heard the dash and I don't see him engaging with anybody, sometimes I'll actually get off the cypher machine and I'll position myself in between a pallet. With mechanic, you always want to be near a pallet. That will prevent the, the clown from his rocket dash. You always want to be in an area where you presume that the hunter is coming after you first, which means that you need to know which ciphers are safe and which ciphers are not. I tried to do a video on that before. It's just there's, you know, so many different variations of ciphers, different maps, different circumstances. So you need to learn that with experience, right? Like we know right now, I'm, on, you know, I'm in a relatively safe spot. And that's important with mechanic. Mechanic is one of... It, it's your character for one of the best kiters on your team. That's what it really is for. Uh, you need to know how to use and utilize each area. Remember, some of these ciphers are more dangerous late game than what they are early game. So the thing with mechanic is that you have to really do a good job at knowing which ciphers are bad, but also not playing too um, passively. Because at the end of the day, your team is relying on you to really decode as fast as possible. So in most circumstances, you need to decode right away, but in some circumstances, you may actually need to move from a certain cipher machine. However, veterans, people who have at least, you know, 1,500 to 3,000 games, they, for the most part, know how to decode at every single cipher machine that is presented to them. So, like, for instance, Arms Factory, I'm actually leaving the middle area. I don't like the middle area early game as a mechanic. I don't really have too much vision. It is true that you can, you can kite there, but why even bother, especially against a charging clown? So I'm going to reposition to one of the stronger areas of the map. you got the three windows. you got the, the two pallets over here, the two pallets on the other side. So this is just showing you the importance of early game positioning. And this one skill really makes or breaks a mechanic. This is what defines a good mechanic or not. Their ability early game. Your ability to read the map and know which areas are strong, which areas are not strong, which areas do I know that I can stay in. One of the biggest things that you need to be careful with as a mechanic is sometimes the hunter will go after another player, right? Early game. They'll go after another player and you think that you're safe because you see them actively trying to hit the other player or you see that the other player has been hit once so you keep decoding your machine you got to be careful with that because a lot of geisha players for instance who have teleport will actually do that to trick you make you feel like you need to keep decoding and they teleport on you and that's where there's a huge risk with playing with the aggressive play style anyways always be near a pallet especially when you hear the clown dash there are some cypher machines where you can keep decoding and there's some cypher machines where if you hear the rocket dash you may actually need to get off for a second because positioning within the pallet is more important than you actually decoding you'll learn this with experience you'll learn which ciphers can i aggressively keep decoding which uh, cipher machine should I put my doll down on which cipher machine should I get but make sure you're always near a pallet or a window preferably a pallet over a window because a pallet that you don't have a debuff with that like you do with a window I really hope you guys enjoyed this guide I try to put as much energy and effort into showing you how I play on a rank 6 level um, that a lot of great players have seen me play with this sort of build people like Emrakul and Jokey and and uh, people like Twisters and Yo Mama and Call Me Duty and uh, Blue Race Car and all these really good players who I've played against um, have been able to do good against. Uh, they obviously do good against me as well when I'm a hunter. So I really hope that you enjoy this. When I play against a mechanic that's playing like this, it makes me very scared because of that decoding. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Thank you guys all always for the support. I'm trying to do the best that I can, trying to manage my over competitiveness versus trying to have a have a relaxed time, but trying to get you guys the content to play on a high caliber level. I really hope that you can use this. And uh, remember, it's going to take time. It's going to take energy and you'll eventually get there. Just keep practicing, keep going in there and keep telling yourself you can do it. Have a good one, guys. Take care.